I'm going to talk about restorative seafood, the fish that we're overfishing, and the solutions that we've come up with, and things that we could do in the future. Um, so first I want to talk about um, Barton Seaver. He's a chef. He's the executive chef at Cafe St. X in Washington, D.C. He came up with the idea of restorative fishing. His idea is use fish that most people don't usually eat and make them interesting to people. So what is restorative seafood? It's the replenishment and progression of a, the evolution of a dynamic species and system. The background of industrial fishing, there's 80 to 90 million metric tons of seafood pulled out of the oceans per year. That's basically the human weight of China. If you do out the math, that's like gas-wise, energy-wise. Um, there's 47 million tons of fuel used each year by fishing fleets worldwide. And if you do out the math fully, it's about 13 and a half pounds of fish per gallon. Industrial fishing, in the wasteful sense, in the bycatch, take uh, shrimp for example. For one pound of shrimp, you have to harvest five to 15 pounds of bycatch. And Mark Benjamin, he's a oceanographic videographer, He's written a couple articles called Grinding Nemo. It's a series that kind of talks about all the bycatch that the fishing industry uses. That 30 million metric tons of bycatch is ground up and used for fish food in like fish farms. So the first fish that I want to talk about that the world is overfishing is the codfish. So in 1968, the cod catch from the Grand Banks uh, in like northern Canada went from 810,000 tons to 34,000 tons. George's bank quota cut to 762 metric tons for the entire year. The next fish I want to talk about uh, is tuna. So ICAT is the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tuna. That is the government sector that controls, obviously, the conservation and the number of tuna in the Atlantic Ocean. Tuna is a global fishery. Since wild caught tuna is, it's hard because you can't, like, you can't catch it on a large scale. So you have to do, you have to base it off of or and reel and rod catch. So, which is good in the sense that it keeps the, keeps the population up and it's not like overfished, but it's hard because like in Asia, in Japan mostly, where tuna is a, like a major source of food for them, their fleet for tuna is extremely large. So they, tech, they actually have their ways of overfishing them. So the ways that they kind of get around that is aquaculture. They'll farm tuna in these pens, but the problem with growing them in pens is that they're warm-blooded animals and they can reach up to speeds at 40 miles an hour. So the problem with those is like these pens are all just, they're just nets. So these like tuna can swim through the net if they want to, or they can just, they can, they can push the entire pen around. So that's, that's why a boat's always with it because they got to keep the pen from going all over the place. Farming salmon is extremely successful. It used to be six pounds of food to one, one pound of salmon. The issues with farming salmon also are, like I said before, inbreeding um, through like escapes because salmon farms are based in rivers. So if a large amount of salmon were to escape at some point, it will affect the wild salmon in that river. The next is the solutions that we've come up with for sustainable fishing. Farming and aquaculture with certain fish, so like tilapia, for example, you can use that for aquaponics. It's easy to grow tilapia and the waste from the tilapia will help grow, grow plants, so which is good for both seafood and for regular farming because if you, you can grow crops and tilapia at the same time, so you can harvest two things at once. Aquaculture is the fastest growing food system with roughly a 7% growth per year. And so if you add the wild caught and the aquaculture productions, it equals out to about 140 to 180 million metric tons of seafood per year, which is equal to two human populations of China with the fish. Here at home in Massachusetts, um, we do our sustainable practices, our cat shares, so that relates to um, CSAs, which are Community Sustainable Agriculture. One example of that is Cape Ann Fresh Catch. It's a seafood distribution center in Gloucester. CSAs are good because it keeps, it keeps the revenue that they get in Massachusetts. It's not going off to different countries. And it, it ensures that those fishermen um, always have a job because they have a set number of people that buy almost like shares. So you pay a certain amount of money to the fishermen and that ensures that they give you a certain amount of fish or seafood every single year. Additionally, Wellfleet Oyster and Clam, that's the shellfish company in Wellfleet. They grow in Wellfleet Harbor through the CSA program. That's good because they 
and distribute their shellfish all across America, 100% sustainable. They grow only in Wellfleet Harbor and they don't use any chemicals or fertilizers. And their seed, the seeds for their um, oysters are, they catch them in Wellfleet Harbor so they don't actually have to buy them from anywhere. The shellfish industry is one of the better sources of food in the world because the price of shellfish is about the 30th of a cost to bring beef to market. It's pretty sustainable, it's easier to grow them. Um, you don't need a whole lot of space and it is actually good for the state too because to grow shellfish you have to buy um, like you have to buy a plot of like the harbor so that keeps that keeps revenue flowing through the state itself. Right now we're more of a wild caught like seafood industry at 67%. Hopefully in the future we'll be more of a farm raised, which would be better because it limits the amount of seafood that we're pulling out of the oceans per year. Yeah.